Number eight was the failure to replace transferred players. It was always going to be a tricky season. Gilberto left the building, although we definitely seen the best of the invisible man, if that makes any sense. Kleb buggered off. Great feet, good touch, fine dribbler. But for God's sake, shoot, man! And Flamini, who appeared to have just blossomed into a world-class player, but decided to skip the country anyway and go sit on a bench somewhere in Italy. The fact that we lost three influential players was worrying enough, but the fact that we failed to replace any of them was worrying, multiplied by a lot of heavy fretting and divided by extreme concern as to how exactly we were going to cope without them and how were we going to improve on the disappointment of the previous season. Well, the answers to those two questions were we couldn't and we didn't. The season before, we came very, very close. We all know about that game in Birmingham. It all sort of trickled away there. I mean, you have an expectation. You know, it's not like going to the theatre where you get a guaranteed good ending and a finale. You know, football is not like that. It's a sport. It sort of crumbled like a pack of cards with William Gallus sitting on the pitch at Birmingham City, um, lamenting um, the, the fact that Gail Clichy gave away a very late goal. And, and, and post that for about six weeks, Arsenal season, which looked to be towering in the direction of um, the Premiership unassailably, um, semi-collapsed and we only came third. Wish we could have kept Flamini. Um, perhaps it was a mistake at that stage to let Gilberto go, although there's an awful lot of fans that thought he was too old anyway, so I think they can't have the cake and eat it. He's either too old or he's, he's good enough. Perhaps we needed the experience for one more year with Flamini gone and Gilberto would have stayed. So losing players that were not replaced, it, it, it was hard to go into this last season with any real sense of optimism. No way did Arsenal Wenger want to get rid of Flamini. No way did Arsenal Wenger want to get rid of, of Alexander Clare. You've got outside factors that turn a player's head and then you, you are skittled. You didn't totally miss Flamini and, and Schleb, you know. You didn't totally miss them because these guys were, they were going to pick up the pieces and and then when they got hurt, it was, uh, you know, it felt bad for them as bad, bad for the club, you know. We've had a lot of injuries. I think the two or three midfielders that are playing are just, I just wonder whether they're really up to the mark. Have we replaced Vieira, Petit and, you know, our midfielder four or five years ago? I probably don't think we have. There were two people I was very sorry to see leave. Uh, not the two that everybody talked about all season. Myself, I thought Lehman and, and Gilberto Silva were the two we missed. Most Arsenal fans probably felt that the reason that they didn't make a push uh, in the last few weeks was because the squad was thin. Losing Flamini and Taleb was massive on the pitch, but also losing them in the dressing room was, was huge. I think you lost that spirit, and I think that was, that was massive, I think. And I don't think the fallout that happened you know, during and after the, the Spurs game in the dressing room would have been allowed to have happened in a nicer dressing room atmosphere. As a manager, Mr Wenger has to look at that and say the squad's too thin. You have to look at, um, although Giggs had played really, really well, you have to look at why we've got, um, you know, an inexperienced 18-year-old playing in the Champions League against Man U at the back. One of the big problems at Arsenal is that this whole situation with players over 30 where they never give them a more than a, a year's contract or and they can't offer them any sort of security so someone like Gilberto will always walk out and any players over 30 seem to automatically go for a four-year contract elsewhere. We let Diara leave in January, a defensive midfielder. You know, we were short on them. We only had Gilberto and Flamini. Flamini, whose contract was running out, Gilberto had a cataclysmic loss of form. Um, you know, why didn't we go out and buy somebody? Why don't we invest the money that the fans keep putting back into the club, into challenging for something? I don't understand. Uh, we're told on the one hand that he has money to spend, uh, a lot of money to spend. This was at the early part of the season, pre-season, and he didn't spend. And then we come back to this question of, is it that he should be bringing in more high-profile players or is it that he just can't and this genuinely is all he can do? In which case he's do he is doing a great job with the, the, the means at his disposal because other teams are spending a lot more money. Maybe his hands are tied. Maybe he's, maybe he's not getting the money to buy the players he want. We don't really know that. You know, they had a meeting there, but uh, he's, he says he can get the money. It's been backed into a corner. I mean... When you think what he's done over the last few years, with, with financially speaking, with both hands tied behind his back compared to a lot of other clubs, it's quite remarkable. And I think they, the club were, have just um, taken that for granted, especially when they booted Dean out. He got the money to, 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 have, to buy our Chavin, 
but that seemed to be the longest transfer. That was worse than my transfer. It seemed to go on for about four months, five months. Is he coming? Is, is St Petersburg letting him go in? But he got him in the end. He looks a terrific little player. When you're going out and buying players <laughs> just to fill a gap, it, it contradicts the youth policy. There's no point bringing in good youth young players and bringing them through the ranks if you're going to buy an experienced player who might be good for one or two seasons, but he's not going to prove longevity. So you had the midfield taken apart completely got them all back together, I thought, oh, thank goodness for that. And the next thing you know, what is it, four of the back five are out. It was extraordinary. So it wasn't injuries, it was injuries to the whole part of the team. People often talk about, well, you know, you should have backup for this. The problem is, if you bring in top players and then say to them, well, mate, you're just not playing, you know, you're going to be sitting there on the bench game after, and they're not going to stand for that. The only way you can do that is by having younger players who know their weight and their time. Wagner seems to build, get them young. And if you, if, if you get young players and they do well, you've got faith in them, the players will return that faith. And you'll always get that bit extra out of the player instead of buying a so-called superstar. Do you say you think Jack Wilshire is going to be the player we all hope he's going to be? If he is, do you bring in a player who's going to stop him playing first team games for the next five years? Well, if you want him to leave the club, you do. If you want him to go somewhere else looking for first team football, then you do. But I don't.